Welcome back to the module on providing culturally responsive instruction for Native American students. Recall that this module covers the what and why of culturally responsive instruction, understanding culture and Native American diversity, foundations for a culturally responsive practice, where to start some initial guidelines for instruction, going further, more guidelines, pedagogical implications by subject area, and action steps towards developing a culturally responsive practice. This video focuses on where to start some initial guidelines. At the beginning of implementing culturally responsive instruction for Native American students, we suggest a number of guidelines that you may want to integrate into your teaching practices. These are based on foundations we've discussed in the prior section. These guidelines are for instructional strategies, instructional activities, norms of social interactions, teacher attitudes, instructional materials, curriculum, and community and parent involvement. This video covers instructional strategies and activities, norms of social interactions, and teacher attitudes. Starting with general instructional strategies, we first think about strategies that incorporate traditional Native ways of teaching and learning. These include giving students choice in what and how they learn, incorporating modeling and demonstration, and using storytelling, parable, allegory, and example. Giving students choice in what and how they learn is based on a number of issues that were discussed in the prior section. For example, traditional Native beliefs in individual agency and autonomy and epistemologies that emphasize personal responsibility. The importance of student choice also stems from the value that many Native American tribes place on allowing individuals to experience and control their own journeys without interference. This extends even to one's children. Demonstration and modeling is another approach that may be particularly valuable for Native American students, especially given its roots in traditional Native American teaching. For example, instead of providing students with a list of reading comprehension strategies, Demonstrate using one with a think aloud that shows your thinking and engagement with the text and give students an opportunity to practice the strategy. So that students can better understand what successful learning looks like, it is important to provide opportunities for students to observe more advanced practice in the classroom. This approach has greater success with Native students than relying heavily on lectures or alternately on trial and error. Also mirroring common traditional Native American educational practices, consider how you can incorporate storytelling, parable, allegory, and example in your instruction. These techniques provide another way for students to build their understanding and position learning within a larger context. The use of these techniques also allows listeners to see relationships and come to their own conclusions, supporting the belief that each person can have a different perspective. It is important to note that students from traditional Native communities may come to school with strong oratory and storytelling skills and with strengths in systems thinking and knowledge of the natural world. These strengths help students both learn from and actively participate in instructional strategies involving storytelling, parable, and allegory, as well as examples. Next, we'll look at the nature of instructional activities that might be important for Native American students learning. We recommend that you provide authentic context for classroom work and assignments and connect these academic activities to real purposes valued by students. Epistemologies that focus on community and rootedness in place also suggest the value of community-based assignments and projects. Similarly, the value placed on community and responsibility to others suggests the importance of fostering active, hands-on learning that involves engagement with students, teachers, and the environment. In engaging in such instructional activities, it's also important to be sensitive to local norms of social interaction. Connecting academic activities to real purposes valued by students is critical for student engagement and supporting students' ongoing interest in staying in school. By involving students in real projects, they can actively see the utility and value in their learning. In a study by Rada, Iwamoto, and Patrick of students in an urban school district, they found that many Native students did not connect finishing high school with employability. That is, they did not perceive that a high school diploma would help them get a job. 
This research demonstrates the importance of students seeing school as personally relevant and beneficial. In addition to helping students see the utility of their learning, place-based local projects and assignments appeals to a number of elements of shared Native American epistemologies, such as a focus on community, locating learning within the big picture, making connections, and seeing interrelationships between learning and the natural world. Service-oriented projects in the local community also strongly build on values, connecting to students' sense of responsibility to their community. And one can imagine projects and assignments that target issues related to the responsible use of power. Such projects can also provide a bridge between schools and Native American communities. Material should include local places and community as an important context for study. This supports students' engagement and understanding. Place-based learning materials can be multidisciplinary and emphasize experiential and intergenerational engagement. Place-based materials are an excellent way to link content to values, culture, and community. Similarly, involving students actively in authentic, hands-on activities, actively engaged with peers, teachers, and their environments, can also help combat a significant reason that students drop out of school. In studies by Dale and by Brandt, Navajo students gave boredom as a major reason for dropping out. The primary pedagogical practice these students encountered in school was reading textbooks and answering questions at the end of chapters, which Navajo students found especially ineffective. Instead, explicitly connect learning to students' everyday lives and the world outside of school. This may involve loosening disciplinary boundaries. Next, we'll consider norms of social interactions during instruction. In your classroom, it is helpful to be cautious about spotlighting students. Be aware of cultural norms around public displays of affection. Understand other local norms of interaction and consider using a demanding but warm style. We suggest to be cautious about spotlighting students because this goes against norms of traditional native teaching and learning. As such, try not to single out students for public praise or punishment. Additionally, profuse or bubbly praise is not considered supportive of good character by many native peoples, and public punishment or criticism can be considered demeaning. Yet students may appreciate private words of praise or feedback. Connected to this is the issue with the questioning strategy of Initiate, Response, and Evaluate, or IRE. This is when a teacher initiates a question with her class, has a student publicly respond, and then evaluates the response as right or wrong in front of everyone. While this approach is often considered problematic for all students for a variety of reasons, for Native American students, it has the added problem of publicly evaluating them in front of their peers. If they are correct, they may be made uncomfortable because a peer may not also know the correct answer and may be overshadowed. If they are wrong, then their error is announced to their peers, which may be considered a type of shaming. It is important to be aware of cultural norms around public displays of affection, as these are culturally specific. Often Native cultures reserve displays of affection to more private settings than the classroom. Spend time in the local community and take cues from community members to determine what's right for your students. There are also some common misunderstandings that non-Native teachers may have about Native students. At home, children may be taught to pay attention and show respect by not making eye contact and being quiet. This behavior can be misinterpreted as a lack of interest and engagement. Students also may not publicly display knowledge in a group setting in case a peer doesn't have the same knowledge, as this could lead to his or her embarrassment. And while humor is important, non-Native people may use types of humor such as sarcasm, which could result in Native students feeling laughed at instead of laughed with. Overall, teachers cultivating good relationships with students and their families is a prerequisite for student engagement and learning. In this effort, teachers can employ a demanding but warm style. This demonstrates both high expectations and caring, which are essential for student learning. We also underscore the importance of teacher attitudes towards students. Teachers' values, attitudes, and ideologies towards students and Native communities and cultures has been shown to be vital for Native students' success in school. In interviews of Native youth who dropped out of school, 
beyond being bored, over half stated that their teachers did not care about them. Here are a few qualities that the literature shows are important for teachers of Native students to have. Caring, warm, approachable, supportive, flexible, showing respect for students, and expecting excellence. Now for some exit questions. Describe an upcoming lesson where you can incorporate student choice in how or what they learn. With the choice, are all students being held to the same high expectations? What is one way that you could incorporate a place-based approach in your upcoming instruction? Think about your attitudes towards and interactions with your Native students. How well do these exemplify the qualities discussed in this module? Where might you need to improve? We are grateful to the following individuals for their contributions to these modules.